Glioblastoma is the most aggressive brain tumor. Most people will die within two years of being diagnosed. It's the same tumor that uh, John McCain had, uh, that Ted Kennedy and even Bo Biden had. And even though there was a large span of time between their individual diagnoses, because the field hasn't really advanced much, it's very likely they were all treated in the same way. And so this field is really desperate for new treatments. The dream of neuro-oncologists has been to have a treatment that can specifically target these otherwise resistant cells. Neuro-oncologist and associate professor of medicine, Dr. Milan Cheda, is hoping to one day provide a dream come true treatment for glioblastoma through research done in his lab and in the labs of his collaborators. And he's making progress with a discovery made through a collaboration with Dr. Michael Diamond, professor of medicine and professor of molecular microbiology and of pathology and immunology. Diamond previously published extensive research on the Zika virus, a disease that spread to people through mosquito bites. Outbreaks of Zika left many babies with permanent brain damage. As scary as Zika may be, research on Zika soon led to an idea about trying to use the Zika virus to treat glioblastoma. The idea may have uncovered Zika's silver lining for patients with this deadly brain tumor. And we're talking about predominantly an adult brain tumor. And Zika virus causes minimal problems in adults. The virus has a propensity to infect neuroprogenitor cells in fetuses, and then can cause cell injury to them. Because of that, we had a former postdoc in the laboratory who had an idea and said, well, if it can infect progenitor cells that are functioning normally, what about tumor stem cells in the brain that sort of look like progenitor cells? They're a little different, they're tumor cells, but they share some features with them. And so what he showed was that Zika virus could infect and kill tumor stem cells that are glioblastoma tumor stem cells. We tested just in culture in the laboratory, meaning in the Petri dish, can Zika virus kill cancer stem cells? And it can, but we wanted to see, well, is it gonna just kill any cell that we subject it to? And it doesn't, it's a very specific against cancer stem cells. Then we took patient samples, slices from the operating room of tumors, and we subjected those to the virus and the virus wasn't infecting all of the tumor cells. It was infecting specifically the cancer stem cells. So there's specificity there. And then using operating room specimens of patients who are undergoing epilepsy surgery, so not tumor at all, but we got epilepsy specimens. We found that if you subject those to the virus, the virus is not infecting. So this shows that it's very specific to the cells we wanted to target. Then they discovered how Zika virus may be a key to unlocking the power of immunotherapy for glioblastoma. Immunotherapy uses a patient's immune system to fight cancer. The idea would be the first treatment for glioblastoma is usually a surgical resection. Now we can combine Zika virus with immunotherapy at the time, uh, at right after the tumor is removed by surgery. In lab mice, Diamond's team discovered how the Zika virus can activate immune cells to destroy the deadly brain tumor. Injected it directly into growing tumors in mice. We found that these mice could survive long-term. When you don't use the virus, they, they, in these control groups, they would die within about a month or just over a month but we were seeing mice living years. And, and so these are long-term survivor mice. First of all, we made it in a more attenuated version that's safer because you know there's like some concerns about putting viruses in the brains of immunocompromised people. So we engineered a way that the virus is not nearly as potent as it normally is, but still can kill all of these stem cells. And then we showed mechanistically that the major way that the virus works is actually to reawaken the immune response because the combination of the virus and the tumor provoke a CD8 T cell response, and it's the CD8 T cell response that then clears the rest of the tumor away. 
the groundbreaking findings may one day be used as a targeted therapy, giving a powerful boost to an immunotherapy drug. And so at the time that uh, you get this tumor resection, the surgeon would actually introduce the Zika virus directly into the glioblastoma cavity. They would put the virus directly into the brain where they took out the old thing. And then uh, maybe a couple of days later or a week later, we might uh, add some other drugs to go with it, like ones that, uh, for example, checkpoint blockade inhibitors, which have been shown to accelerate tumor clearance in certain solid tumors, but not really worked in glioblastoma. We showed in our animal models that the combination of Zika virus and PD-1 therapy, which is t tumor checkpoint blockade therapy, uh, really gave uh, outstanding results. For the treatment to be possible, animal studies continue. Once we see that it does not actually cause any symptoms or significant illness in any of these animal models, then I think it's probably safe to think about uh, planning uh, uh, a human phase cl one clinical trial after uh, paper paperwork is filed with the FDA. The FDA, of course, would need to approve this. The major issue right now is safety. And so we're doing these studies to determine that this attenuated virus does not cause any harm by itself.